to pizza. Pizza. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Sam. Together, we make two traveling nuggets ready to dip into the rich culture sauce that is Japan. Will Hiroshima fully season this bunch? This is nightmare fuel. Or will it give us the crunch? Get sent back at customs. <laughs> After arriving in Hiroshima, we hopped on one of these beautiful mainline trams through the city. These trams are so retro that you still have to pay with cash. And even though they're old, they're still pristine. Even the conductors are really, really well turned out with their beautiful suits, caps, and ticket purses. It makes me imagine their wives pressing their suits in the morning. And arriving at our hotel, we finally got to see what all these Japanese amenities are all about. You get hairbrushes, razors, you name it. As a guy that likes freebies, I was very happy. Oh. Let's see, you're gonna break your arm there. Oh my god. Jeez, how high are we going? I'm 304. And straight out the left, we're greeted by our first strange Japanese gadgets. One was actually a TV top up guard dispenser, whatever that means. <laughs> so graceful. It's cute. <laughs> Let's play Sam's favorite game, What Does This Button Do? Featuring Light Switch, Alarm Clock. Set my alarm, please. More light switches. And for the buttons he didn't press, the phone, the pen, the air conditioning. It's the tiniest one toothbrush I've ever seen. Okay, I just had to press this one. You'd be there, believe it. When you're going to a Shinto shrine, uh, you go up the stairs, or if there is stairs, you ring the bell. Like a huge bell, you've got to really shake it. Um, and then you turn to the guy, you do two bows, two claps, and then he blesses you. Turns out not every Shinto shrine has a monk present, but he made our first experience extra special. Before delving into the city, we thought we'd pay our respects to the victims of the 1945 tragedy. We didn't film much as to take in the experience. The whole museum was breathtaking and captivating, and a real reminder of what happened here. After which we visited the dome, which was at the epicenter, and its story of how it survived is truly amazing. First time eating grilled eel. Wow, that's really good. Thank you for the lovely meal. 
<laughs> Back at the hotel, we dreamt of that conger eel. But it wasn't long before we had our minds set on. I watch so many videos of Japanese hotels in my spare time and I was so excited to see what breakfast had to offer. It had a lot of western items that you would see in a continental, like croissants, toast, waffles. But it also had soft scrambled egg, boiled rice, miso soup, fish and tofu cutlets. I was in heaven. And this stuff. Sam, what was that? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. First stop of the day was Hiroshima Castle. We started off in the castle gardens, which are way too picturesque for their own good. And amongst the moats and the ancient stone walls, we found trees that actually survived the atomic bombing. It's quite humbling to see these resilient trees still standing strong. Next, we made our way to the Hiroshima Gokoku Shrine. It's located right before the main castle. It's a really peaceful spot and it adds a whole historic vibe to the place. We took some time here to soak up the sun and take in the architecture before trying our luck with a Japanese omikuji, a fortune-telling paper strip. It was fun and a very traditional way to engage with the culture. Which one was it? <laughs> it was then that we learned you can drink in public. Who'd have known? Heading into the main keep, we found there was a museum that spans all five levels heading up to the observatory. The lower levels focus on Hiroshima's samurai culture and the history of the castle. I've always wanted to see samurai swords in person, so getting to see some from the 1500s was crazy. On the higher levels you get to learn about the history of the castle and the fact that it was actually rebuilt twice after World War II. One of them only lasted I think like 10 years. Climbing all the way to the top we found the observation deck which gave us ridiculous views of the city. The city itself feels really new, but it was mostly rebuilt in the 50s and 60s, which gives it this strangely comforting retro vibe. It's, uh, it's really nice. <laughs> so we got some food and some beers for a picnic. Sam has his ramen. <laughs> We had a total stress trying to get one the water as well because we couldn't work out how to use the kettle. Like, it was a complicated kettle to be fair. <laughs> and there are new and Oh. Here we are having our own garden picnic one. <laughs> Do it in one bite. <laughs> Video you could do. Oh. We have our picnic. I don't know, so you should take it when you're one from life. No. <laughs> All of that came to four pounds ninety three. <laughs> Pretty cool. You literally wouldn't get a meal deal with beers in like Tesco's for that. For one person. This is the Sukayen Gardens. It's basically the central park of Hiroshima. People have been coming here for years and you can definitely see why. It's so peaceful. Um, let's just let nature do the talking on this one, eh? We sat down to take in some of the nature around us, and I have to give a very firm warning, I fell deep 
deeply in love with this little guy. We called him Simon. He's Simon the Turtle. Long live Simon. No, Simon, come back! Have you seen Simon? Have you seen Simon? What about you? Have you seen him? Ah, <sighs> Simon. Hello? Describe the sensation. <laughs> it has that healthy smooth little underlying flavor. Like kind of grassy, fruity flavors. Let's go! in Hiroshima, there's lots of them, but, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, but you're not hooking that onto that. Like, the, the, the ring is too thick for the hook. But it looks really, really doable. You're like, oh, I could put, like, three in one spook, you know? One spook. But one spook. you're not. But you're not. You're not gonna. But, but it's so gonna fall. Why is that being, like, the, the stickiest paper you've ever seen? Yeah. How can't they fall? Literally sellotaped together. They're, that one is literally sellotaped to that one, and that one is literally sellotaped to this bar. What anime characters? Yeah, upstairs is definitely like a lot more like collectibles. Yeah. Like we literally just watched three people win. Yeah. Three in like a very short space of time. Win. Yeah. And in the UK, I feel like the machines you could spend like 50 goes and you wouldn't win. Yeah. At that point, you may as well just buy the thing you want. Exactly. <laughs> Tato Station, huh? Floor 1 be super cute. Floor 2 be still pretty cute. Floor 3 be crazy anime casino vibes. Floor 4, low key terrifying backrooms vibes. It's like the further if you get scared. <laughs> All these arcade machines are thirsty work, so we went to the area of Hondori and searched for a beer, and found Mac Bar. Woo -hoo! Come on inside. I hear the song every rock bar plays. As you enter. That's a good sign. Welcome to Mac. <laughs> Welcome to Mac's bar. <laughs> Our first Japanese rock bar, and the moment we realized you can smoke indoors in bars in Japan, which for non-smokers was a little off-putting. 
Samuel. Uber. Uber, yeah. Emily. Uber, yeah. Emily, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Once we got to the area, the ride was about two seconds. <laughs> yeah, right? Literally. Oh, a cute car. Well, Hiroshima, you've been great. <laughs> cool rock. That's right, sadly our time in Hiroshima had come to an end, we had our beers and we're off to Kyoto. But lucky for you, we went on a day trip to Miyajima, so that'll be the next video, and stay tuned for that one. I think it might be this one. Practice, practice, practice.